very good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us today right here at CAC TV. My name is Faith Kaulu and this is Let's Talk Family and today I'm very excited to have Onyango Ochieno on set who is very willing to be very candid with us and have a very impactful conversation, I believe. Now, Onyango Tieno is a mental health advocate, a poet, a writer, as well as a trauma healing conversationist. Yeah, well, that's very interesting. Maybe just do, what does it all pertain about being a conversationist on trauma healing? Well, I talk about trauma and its effects on people's lives, mm -hmm. its effects on relationships and societies. Um, and just opening up spaces where people could speak about um, what happened to them that really hurt them. Yeah. So that's creating conversation And bringing healing to yeah. all that, so healing the world. Yeah. Wow, that's a very, a bold step right there, I'd say, because people opening up to you is like you taking in their damage and mm -hmm. means you have to be very strong to handle that. Now let's get to Onyango Otieno, yeah? You coming, being a young boy, being in a violent home, um, where your father was abusive. How was that? Please tell us. Difficult. Um, I usually say for every child, home is supposed to be like the first church. True. You want home to be the safest place okay. you exist in because there's nowhere else you know that you can be safe like home. But when home is a battlefield, then you, s you lose that sense of belonging. You lose yourself. And that was that was that's that's what what it was like for me, um, watching my dad being violent towards us, my mother, my siblings, myself, uh, being the first one I witnessed most of it. Um, and uh, dad was a good man, but he he struggled with alcoholism. That what I came to know later was uh, stimulated by his personal trauma as well. Um, and uh, he, it's just that he transferred it to his family um, and you know when I was younger I didn't get it because mm -hmm. nobody explains to you these things yeah. and um, it was after I got to be a little curious uh, with why he was the way he was um, I think somewhere in my mid-twenties that I, 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 I started getting glimpses of okay this is how this man was brought up, this is what he saw when he was young, uh -huh. this is probably how it affected him, this yeah. is why he became whom he was. Because I wanted to stop that cycle, it was going to be so easy for me to continue with it because yeah, sure. I was also angry with him mm -hmm. on very many levels. Um, so yeah, childhood had, it had its many side sides. Um, a lot of it damaged me. But it also taught me very great lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At at any point, did you try to confront him on his current Many times. Time? I mean, I was angry. I was so angry. I could probably have killed that man. I was. I was so angry mm -hmm. at so many things. I witnessed things no child should like. So much blood at home and people insulting each other. Like mm -hmm. things your parents fight over. You shouldn't. You shouldn't hear them. Yeah. Because when they're in their most ugly state, words get thrown around a lot. And you're like collateral damage. It gets you there and you're not supposed to be mm -hmm. there, you know. And nobody comes back to you to ask, so how are you feeling mm -hmm. about this? It's like you're just watching this war going on and the the fighting sides, after they finished, they left you there in the battlefield. And you left there. Now it was your turn to fight your thoughts, yeah. right? Um, so that that wasn't easy. Uh, when I when I grew a little older, I I tried to you know confront him once in a while, mm -hmm. but again it didn't come from a place of love, which made all the difference. Um, and the older I got, it got to a place where it was gonna be easy, because there's somebody who said for reconciliation to happen mm -hmm. first there must be truth, yeah, and that's not an easy thing to happen. Um, so. I'm willing to talk if we are fighting and one of us is willing to talk but the other person is not willing to be open that is, it's very difficult to yeah. be concerned um, and I also understood why it would be difficult for him to open up so I, I just love you from far mm -hmm. yeah you you know being the firstborn and witnessing all this um, did you have anyone you could talk to about it open up and get healing 
Now, the complex thing about that is my dad came from a very large family. Uh, his father married three wives. Mm -hmm. They were like 30 kids. Okay. It was a humongous village. Mm -hmm. uh, but the sad thing was even his brothers looked more like him. So there was so much chaos everywhere. Mm -hmm. There was nearly nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, and he was a firstborn. He is a firstborn in his house, in his home. So you know the respect that comes with that. People can't tell you things. They fear you also because maybe you you're a bit wealthy than them and stuff like that. So it was difficult for them to approach him to tell him these things. Mm -hmm. We had countless family meetings yeah. where people had these conversations but nothing seems to be changing but that mm -hmm. wasn't the problem the problem was we had deep seated issues in our home that needed internal transformation mm -hmm. and for as long as that wasn't going to happen the fighting was going to continue yeah. and it was lonely because there was nobody to really talk to about what i felt you know like sometimes I'd go tell my uncles, this is happening at home, you know, unambua at a sisi to the chap one. So just get on with it, yeah. you know. So I, I, I used to run away from home. I used to run away from home. Mm -hmm. I've been a street child in Nairobi streets. Um, I became suicidal when I was a teenager. I wanted to just to end my life mm -hmm. and things like that. Because I was like, I've, I've tried. <laughs> I've tried and this home doesn't look like somewhere that wants me to live. It wasn't like a safe space for no. you. No. Now, having all, wow, I can imagine the emotional baggage and the trauma that you had to experience as, as a oh. child. How did this affect you? Uh, affect you rather, sorry, and um, your character, your stability, your mental stability as well. You mentioned that you ran away from home. How did all this, being in a violent um, family, impact who you are? I think it's taken like 15 years to really understand the effects of coming from such a house mm -hmm. or such an environment, if I would say. Um, I think my first experience with depression was when I was 15. I think that's when things started going south because um, I got expelled from my from high school mm -hmm. and I didn't, I, I stopped going to class, yeah. I stopped bathing, mm -hmm. I stopped interacting with people. I just looked weird. And I'm I'm usually I'm a quiet person. So you wouldn't know what's going on in my mind. Yeah. If and if I don't get people to talk to because I felt so misunderstood on so many levels and I mean the school environment is a huge place, so many people, there's mm -hmm. barely time to really concentrate on one person. Yeah. Which is so unfair for quiet children, you know. Um, if you're not standing out, if you're not a popular person, yeah. you just disappear into you're the forgotten. crowd. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And the world is virtually like that, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, my depressive episodes started that time and they got worse mm -hmm. because the, the violence was still happening at home. Um, and even when I kept running away from home and miraculously coming back, because when I ran, I didn't plan to come back. Things just happened in between yeah. and somehow I was found or this or that, mm -hmm. um, which is for me usually just say God just refused to let me go. Because I was done with things, I was mm -hmm. done everything, you know. Um, when I got to my 20s and finally moved out from home at some point, Starting to live alone, yes, I was away from all that, mm -hmm. but now all the thoughts came back. All the unresolved issues came yeah. back, all the unprocessed pain. Um, and it made me curious because in 2017, I was actually suicidal again. It was mm -hmm. the last time it felt like that. Um, I was going through a very dark phase and uh, I, I didn't have a job that time. And I was uh, letting go of uh, like a, a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, my, I had, I had lost very close friends of mine. Like somebody, some one of them had, had killed themselves, and another died of low blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if so and so are dead right now, I can just join them because yeah. I mean they're not worried about traffic mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they yeah. don't have to think about rent and mm -hmm. food and the mayhem of this earth. 
you know and um that's the first time i came out actually to write i used i would write normally about my life mm-hmm. and what um like i I'd write about gender based violence a lot um but this time i actually wrote about my depression and suicidal thoughts mm-hmm. and that's when i think part of my life again changed because i think what i would say god has been calling me to is to help people communicate things they've not had a language to talk about um th- i the courage i have is from my mom my my mother is the strongest thing i've met on this earth mm-hmm. i think i walk with her light um and it, when i came out with my story you know so many people got back to my inbox saying i'm also going through this and yeah. i didn't know i didn't know what to do i don't know what to say i don't know who to talk to um i'm ashamed um i can't you know and both both men and women and it got me curious like how come so many of us are going through this thing but nobody's talking about it how how is that possible mm-hmm. you know um and during that time we didn't have mental health conversations as much as we do today yeah. So I I got online and tried to look for stories. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find African stories around mental health. They weren't there much. Um all of them came from from Europe from and the, uh, the West. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo man, this is what I want to change. I want to tell our stories and I'll start with mine. Mm-hmm. So I started writing more and more. Um I read everything I could mm-hmm. about mental health. I really wanted to understand because I felt also If I don't get what this thing is about it's going to take me down next time. Yeah. So for me it was an it was a turning point which came as a transformation my my life completely changed. Um you know when I started that advocacy work um and so it opened me up to a new world and even if I could say a new me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um and I I even got work opportunities. Um I went for courses, mm-hmm. I learned about the brain, I understood yeah. this is what happens to you when you're depressed. This mm-hmm. is what you can do to reverse that and stuff like that. And a lot of those things are very technical. That's why <laughs> psychologists and, and psychiatrists most of them are not very good storytellers they know the science and i want to be the bridge between understanding the science and breaking it down into art you know in simple words where mm-hmm. which you know normal people like me could could understand yeah you have mentioned that uh, you started learning about mental health and that's when transformation came from within you yeah also speaking out about it now for people who are having the same thoughts suicidal thoughts they want to take their lives because of maybe past traumas or challenges they experience in there yeah how do they conquer it all one of the things i discovered about handling pain is we are taught to run away from it as a way to cope with it mm-hmm. and i learned i kept running for so many years but it never went away until i acknowledged the pain and to accept that okay this is my real situation this is my reality mm-hmm. and it is okay and to be kind with yourself mm-hmm. through that moment because pain comes like a wave and waves don't stay forever yeah. they pass it's mm-hmm. like the wind you know but at that moment what your brain is telling you this is here to finish you it's here to kill you so yeah. you run it's a very natural response mm-hmm. you know um different people use different coping mechanisms but for me one of the things that really helped me in as much as there is still so much stigma against speaking up especially for men even yeah. i think your courage is what will save your life your courage is what will save your life mm-hmm. um if i'm to use the like jesus's analogy if that man came on this earth with his mission and if he chickened out mm-hmm. yeah at the garden when they came for him and yeah. like, god okay this cup it's heavy just stay with it mm-hmm. i'm not going to do this we wouldn't be talking about this whole salvation thing True. today yeah. you know um and you have to have this cuz the world is so sort of like against you at that moment what what the story your brain is telling you is like the world is against mm-hmm. you but you have to face yourself you have to face yourself in a way that you know 
human beings may not understand this but it's, this is about me and my spirit it's not about what people are going to say about this and about that and about this is about you and your spirit mm-hmm. so if at all you're going to say and you won't be understood it's still okay i was okay cuz i mean i had not been hard i didn't feel hard for so many years so even when i write about my life mm-hmm. i'm not looking for validation cuz i love myself so much i'm not looking you know to for sympathy or you know pity or anything yeah, like yeah. that i'm speaking out for people who don't even have courage to even even say anything yeah. you know so that where they are they could feel like they're not alone cuz mm-hmm. i i know the feeling of being alone for so long and you're in that dark corner and you don't know how to get out of it so speaking up is is one thing reaching out to a friend you know um journaling is another mm-hmm. i i listen to music i'm always with headphones i listen to music all the time because it helps me just you know balance myself um and all those ways are ways of expressing so if you keep it in that's when it harms you more mm-hmm. so just look for a way whatever works for you taking a walk taking a bath taking a nap mm-hmm. like whatever it is yeah. um but on the long run also it's to seek some kind of help um if you're in a position to psychiatric help um and if you're not in a position to there's something called talk therapy which mm-hmm. is what this is and this is where i envy women a lot because women are always like <laughs> sitting together <laughs> and talking, talking yeah. and doing all these things you know there was a day i was, I was on langata road and um, i was getting into timo mm-hmm. and there was these two ladies one was holding a child and the other one was just talking to her and they were just you know very hyped animated <laughs> and all this thing mm-hmm. so i i i got into a restaurant for like two two hours When I was coming out they were still standing there mm-hmm. talking and laughing and story meshika mbasa you know yeah. and you see in that moment whatever was happening there was so beautiful because they were letting things out you know we call it mushene and whatever mm-hmm. whatever and gossip nini nini but the things were coming out yeah. by the time they are going home they feel relieved yeah. you know things you know You would never see men doing that kind mm-hmm. of thing for two hours. Well, yeah. yeah, it can never happen. Yeah, and so I mean, because I myself, I didn't have those examples, but I watched my mom and my aunts do that a lot. Um, I think I picked that, and it's because women have also taught me how to be a friendly person, mm-hmm. how to express myself, and stuff like that. Um, and because it has worked for them, it can work for us guys as well. Mm-hmm. So that's what I encourage, like. Um, men just find healthy people healthy men around you mm-hmm. whom you can talk to about these things a lot of us don't know because we don't have figures to look up to mm-hmm. male, male figures to yeah. look up to so it gets really difficult and that's why it's almost easy to follow anybody who talks about masculinity mm-hmm. and yeah. it sounds like it's a good thing because you don't have any examples to True. follow yeah. so the more i mean and it's okay to make those mistakes as you're growing up um but i mean always just look into yourself and say what do i need to better about who i am mm-hmm. today um if i'm going through traumatic experience or depression or whatever it is um who can i reach out to that would help me deal with it yeah you coming out with your story how easy or how hard was it for you it's difficult talking about yourself is difficult anywhere on this earth mm-hmm. however strong you are i mean every time even i'm going in a public place or even in a place like this i always have butterflies because mm-hmm. what what's going to happen you yeah. know my voice disappear <laughs> <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and then the thoughts always come back um and so over time i've just grown I've had better coping skills like you know after this I'm going to chill with a friend and mm-hmm. talk to them because I've already planned that you know I talked yeah. to a friend I know I am going to speak about very serious things today mm-hmm. I'd want to see you after this like yeah, yeah come let's let's just talk mm-hmm. so I do that for myself because it's important to balance yeah. um sometimes it comes with a lot of judgment from people and I'm used to it because I'm, I'm a storyteller mm-hmm. I'm, I I'm trained for it actually So I understand how your light could not could rub somebody off because they are not ready to face themselves. Yeah. Your truth could rub somebody off because they don't relate mm-hmm. with what you say, 
don't relate with what you're doing. And that's totally okay. Yeah. When I'm speaking, I speak from a place of love. When I was younger, it was from bitterness. And the way I grew older and worked on myself, I speak from a place of love. Because I want everybody who listens to me, if I can, if I'm lucky, that they will understand what I'm saying. Not to understand me, but to understand themselves, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and 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 you know that's it's it's part of the journey. Yeah. So as as I grow, um, you meet people who they make you feel like what you're doing is nonsense, and you're gonna meet them. They're gonna be there for the rest of your life, and then you meet so many more whom you don't even know, who will say, you know what? There's something you said that actually changed my life. Mm -hmm that made me not take those pills yeah. that made me not want to cross that road and be hit by a truck mm -hmm. there's something you wrote that made me talk to my dad you know those things and there are very many so i live for the light like you you work with what adds life to you you know yeah the society teaches the man to keep quiet i mean you don't shed tears and you don't publicly speak about what you're going through because then you lose that aspect that makes you a man. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're talking about all this, you coming out with a story and sharing your experience of what you've been through as a man, which is something very not common in today's society. Do you think um, the society is ready to accept that a man is human first, then he's man, mm -hmm. yeah? So he needs to speak out and he needs healing as well as same as a woman would do you think we're at a position i'd say the society is ready to accept and nature the man in such ways i, I want to answer that question in an intelligent way okay <laughs> society will never be ready mm -hmm. we have to make society ready you know society will never be ready yeah. and i read somewhere that um society is an extension of me it's an extension of my thoughts. Society is an extension of my feelings. Mm -hmm. So out of my individuality, what I see in other people is an extension of who I am. Mm -hmm. So how do I, do I want society to change? It's from me changing. Then if society is an extension of me, if I change, mm -hmm. then I can change my extension. Yeah. Then society can move. Society can change. Of course, that system outside me is bigger than who I am. Right, but if I stand for what I believe in, then I can extend it to others who can extend it to other people. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to wait for society to be ready for men to be human beings. I have to humanize my experience and make other men curious about themselves because it's happening, it's happening even it today. Happening. You know, um, if I reach out to five men my whole life, mm -hmm. if I'm only gonna reach out to five men. Mm -hmm. I made my mark mm -hmm. and I'm okay, I'm satisfied with that. Because most times it's imagined that when you speak up, you want to change the whole world. You can't change the whole world, yeah. but you can change your world. And your world to me, my world is my neighborhood, my world is my friends, mm -hmm. my world is people I work with, my world is people who read my stuff. That's yeah. my world. I don't know what's happening in the US, I can't get there, I don't know what's happening in the White House, I can't get to State House mm -hmm. today, but I'm here. I'm on Kak TV. Yeah. This is my world now. Mm -hmm. um, and if I can share something that can, can you know, make somebody think through themselves, that's change for me. Yeah. So. That was an intelligent answer. <laughs> 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 yeah. This is a conversation I believe should go on. Um, but even as we conclude, one thing that you tell the men out there. Love yourself. Mm -hmm speak out uh, it's so important to have healthy male relationships yeah. man stay away from people who just you're with because you want to drink yeah. and there's nothing meaningful you talk about mm -hmm. yourselves no be actually have accountability partners who are fellow males mm -hmm. and you you're checking up on each other for real for real yeah. especially in church it's not happening mm -hmm. enough you know yeah well all right and um, if one needs to reach out to you on um, social media pages. How do they do that? Yeah, um, just Google Onyango Otieno. Mm -hmm. My bald face will be there. Okay. Uh, 
uh, or, or Rix Poet, R I X Poet, mm. uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the same. Um, when I'm available, I'm always willing to, to listen or mm -hmm. to refer people to get help. Mm -hmm. I partner with a lot of mental health organizations mm -hmm. because so many people reach out to me, but they don't have access to these uh, systems. Um, and especially men, I really, really, really want to reach out to men. Um, like, it's okay if you're a lady, you are looking for help, it's okay. Uh, but I'm really encouraging men, mm -hmm. like, let's, let's, let's get out, let's, mm -hmm. let's start speaking. Oh, thank you so much for coming today and being so candid. Yeah, um, I believe a lot of men will, I hope they come across mm -hmm. this actually yeah. and get help and healing that they need, especially uh, childhood trauma. A lot of us ignore the fact that our childhood has shaped us in a way, mm -hmm. cope it in a positive or negative way, but it has one or two things to do with how we are mm -hmm. right now. So thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, that was Onyango Tino on set today on Let's Talk Family and we've had such an enlightening conversation. Let's keep the conversation going as well on our social media pages. Till next time, thank you so much for tuning in to Let's Talk Family.